Hello everyone. So, let us continue our discussion on numerical methods for uh, solution of SDOP system. So, what we have discussed in the previous lecture is that how to solve the equilibrium equation using two different techniques. One is called Nigam Jennings, another is called central difference. And uh, in continuation uh, of that, today we are going to learn Wilson theta. For this, uh, let us first uh, draw the response at two different time and see what are the assumptions and then gradually we will develop the technique. So, recall we have the equilibrium equation m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f. Now, our objective is to find out what is the response x of t, right. Now, if we consider say 2 time point 1 at t i, another at i plus 1. So, this is the point. Obviously, at time point t i we have response x i and then at i plus 1 we have x i plus 1. Now, in this technique we consider third point which is here. So, this is the point and the response between these points linearly vary. Sorry, one small correction, this is the acceleration response. Okay. So, assumption acceleration response varies linearly over time. Now, so we have three points and say this time difference. So, we have extra time point which is here T i plus theta delta t. So, what is T i? It is T i actually plus delta t. So, that means, this is what? This is my delta t. Right. Okay. Now, if we find out the difference in response. So, we have two points. So, this difference is we call it delta x i double dot and this difference is what we call delta x i double dot hat. So, that is the difference in notation. So, whenever we use the delta that means the difference between i and i plus delta t and when we put a hat then we consider theta times delta t as tau. So, what is tau? This is nothing but theta times delta t. Now, theta is the parameter and that is what is actually reflected here in the Wilson theta. Now, as per our notation, so we start with x i double dot and then we have x 
if I write it explicitly, so what we have x double dot at time point t i and then x double dot at time point t i plus delta t. And then finally, this is basically x double dot then t i plus theta delta t. Now, that is the notation we have. So, we consider what? We consider three time points T i, T i plus delta t and then T i plus theta delta t, right. Now, let us first consider the equilibrium equation. So, m x double dot at time point T i plus theta times delta t. Which point should I consider? This point. So, if I complete the equilibrium equation, we have c times x dot evaluated at t i plus theta delta t plus k x evaluated at t i plus delta t, which is equal to f at t i plus theta delta t. So, this is my first equation and the equilibrium is also satisfied at the initial point. So, m x double dot at t i plus c x dot at t i plus k x at t i is equal to f at t i. So, that is the second equation. Now, if we find out 1 minus 2, then what will happen? Obviously, m will have delta x i double dot hat. Just note as per our definition, we have considered two time points i plus theta delta t and i. So, that is the equation plus c times delta x i dot hat plus k times delta x i is equal hat is equal to delta f i hat. So, if I just write down the notation delta x i hat is nothing but x evaluated at t i plus theta delta t minus x at t i. Then delta x dot i hat is equal to x dot evaluated at t i plus theta delta t minus x dot evaluated at the initial point. Similarly, delta x double dot hat i is equal to acceleration evaluated at t i plus theta delta t minus x double dot hat t i. Now, if you look at the schematic diagram of the accelerations, because in this method, what is the assumption? Assumption is that acceleration linearly varies between the two time points at t i and uh, i plus theta delta t, right. So, what we can write x double dot of t is what? x i double dot that is the initial plus the variation in acceleration 
between the two extreme points divided by tau then T minus T i. So, that is the linear variation of acceleration. So, this is the equation of acceleration between i and i plus theta delta t. Now, what we can do? We can uh, integrate this expression and then what we will get? First, we will get the velocity. So, what is the velocity? This will be x i dot plus we will have x i double dot then t minus t i plus half delta x i double dot hat divided by tau then t minus t i whole square. So, we started with the assumption on acceleration and from that we get velocity and then again if we continue the same process we will also get what is the displacement. So, what is the displacement? We will have x i plus x i times x i dot t minus t i plus half x i double dot t minus t i whole square plus one sixth then delta x i double dot hat divided by tau then t minus t i cube. Right. Again I repeat we started with the assumption on acceleration, then from that we get basically the equations of uh, displacement and velocity. Now, in this expression if we put T is equal to T i plus tau, then immediately what we can get is actually the expression for uh, these quantities. So, what we do I repeat again in these expressions. So, we have this set of expression. In this expression particularly this uh, velocity and displacement if we put t is equal to initial point plus tau, tau is what theta times delta t right. Then what we will get we can express these uh, delta x i hat and delta x i dot hat using the information we have. So, let us do that in a minute. So, what we have delta x i dot hat will be equal to x i double dot times tau plus half delta x i double dot hat times so, this is equation 3. Now, if you follow the same approach, we can also write down what is delta x i hat. So, what is that quantity? It is x i dot tau plus half x i double dot then tau square plus 1 by 6 then delta hat x i double dot times tau. So, this was the expression that we derived. So, we get our fourth equation. Okay. Now, if we move one step further, so what we get now, from the last equation what we have here 
if we find out on the right hand side you have you see this delta hat x i double dot. So, if I find out the expression for that what we will get? We get 6 by tau square delta x i hat minus 6 x i by tau minus 3 x i double dot. So, that is the expression and then similarly if we continue what we can also simplify this quantity will have 3 delta x i hat divided by tau minus 3 x i minus tau by 2 x i. So, these are the two final expression we get. We will see in a minute what is the advantage because if you recall this is the equation we derived and by now we have the expression for delta x i double dot hat and then delta x i dot hat. So, these are the two expressions. Now, if you look at these two expressions in both the cases what is unknown? The only unknown is delta x i hat. So, now the next task you can easily sense what we will do? We will use these two expressions back in the equation he given here. So, that we will do in a minute. The moment we do that, we will see uh, the effect of that. So, what we have m delta x i double dot hat and for that we can use the expression that we have just derived. So, in place of that we write 6 by tau square delta x i hat minus 6 x i divided by tau minus 3 x i double dot. So, that is the first part of the equation. Then c times delta x i dot hat. So, for that we have the expression ready. So, we will replace that. So, what we have 3 times delta x i hat divided by tau minus 3 x i minus tau by 2 x i double dot plus k times delta x i hat is equal to delta f i hat. Fine. So, the only unknown in this equation you see we have this delta x i hat. All other things we know x i, we know we can also evaluate x i double dot that we will do in a minute. You can easily sense we will satisfy the equilibrium equation at time point i and then we can easily find out what is the acceleration. So, we know all the quantities in this expression except this delta x i. So, what is this quantity? This is nothing but if you recall x evaluated at time i plus theta delta t minus x evaluated at i. Now, again if we simplify this expression what we will have? We have 6 by tau square times m plus 3 c by tau plus k times delta x i hat is equal to delta f i hat. Then we take the other components from the left hand side to right hand side. So, we will have plus mass times we have 6 x i divided by tau 
plus 3 x i plus c times 3 x i plus tau by 2 x i. Again we end up with the equation equivalent to static deformation. So, we have k effective times delta x i is equal to force effective. So, from this what we can do we can find out what is the delta x i which is nothing but k effective inverse f effective. Now, once we do that you can easily sense uh, at every time point what we can do we can evaluate what is the k effective and f effective and then we can easily find out what is the expression for delta x i hat. Now, once we find out this expression then we can easily put this expression back into this equation to find out what is the difference in acceleration at two time points because on the right hand side of this expression we have just evaluated delta x i hat. Similarly, we can also put that expression here the next equation to find out delta x i dot hat. Now, that gives us the complete solution. So, if you do that, so let us just uh, complete the task. So, let us substitute this quantity into equation. So, we call it say 5 and then say this is 6. Now, what we get? We get delta x i double dot of hat from equation 5. Remember what is this uh, delta x i double dot of hat? This is nothing but the acceleration at this time point. Now, because this is a linear extension, so what we can find out what is my delta x i double dot? This is nothing but delta x i double dot hat divided by theta. So, this is what we get for delta x i double dot. Now, what is this quantity? You can easily write down the expression. What is this quantity? This is nothing but x double dot i plus 1 minus x double dot at i. So, what we know is this quantity. So, from that what we can easily find out what is x i plus 1 double dot. Okay. Now, similarly we can find out delta x i dot. How to do that? So, if we take this expression and then so we can find out delta x i dot use equation 3 and put tau is equal to delta t. So, what we will get? We will get delta x i dot is equal to x i double dot times delta t plus half delta 
x i double dot times delta t. Now, follow the same procedure. Now, consider the next equation. So, equation 4. So, now consider equation 4. So, if we see that equation here and then what you do and replace tau with delta t. So, what you get delta x i is equal to x i times delta t plus half times x i double dot delta t square plus 1 by 6 then delta x i double dot times delta t square. So, that is the expression for displacement. So, what we have evaluated? We have evaluated delta x i, delta x i dot and delta x i double dot. So, what we can easily do? If I consider say this two equation. So, what is my x i plus 1? It will be nothing but x i plus the variation in displacement that we have already found out. Similarly, we can also find out the velocity at i plus 1, it will be x i dot plus the variation of velocity that we experience at i. And then finally, what will be the x i plus 1 double dot? That also we can find out from the variation. We can also find out m inverse times. So, we have f i plus 1 minus c times x i plus 1 dot minus k x i plus 1. So, that gives me complete solution of displacement, velocity and acceleration at time point i plus 1. So, we started from the ith point and then using uh, all this mathematical jugglery. So, what we have find out is basically the response, the complete set of response that is displacement, velocity and acceleration when t is equal to t i plus 1. The only assumption that we have applied in this case is uh, that the acceleration varies linearly between the two time points t i and then i plus delta t. So, what we have done? We, we projected that to a time point i plus theta delta t and using that information actually we find out the complete set of response. Now, here I wish to draw your attention on two points. One is this delta f i, delta f i sorry delta f i hat. So, when we use delta f i hat as per our definition what is that? Force evaluated at i plus theta delta t minus force evaluated at t i Right. So, we know what is the forcing function at T i point, but if you look at the diagram, we know forcing function at i plus delta t. Using these two information, we have to project it using linear interpolation. We have to find out i plus theta delta t. So, we use interpolation to find out this forcing function. So, remember 
when we discussed Nigam Jennings method, we again used linear variation of force between two time points and that is how we derived. In this case again we start with the linear acceleration assumption and then uh, we find out the response of the system. So, that is the first point to be noted here. So, when we will implement this in MATLAB, I will come back to this point and I will show you how we are actually going to evaluate all these um, forces and, and, and uh, other states to find out the complete solution. Now, one more issue for theta, normally the theta is actually set at 1.4 and Wilson actually proved a condition for theta and uh, anything um, for more than 1.38, he showed that it is unconditionally stable. So, we use normally theta equal to 1 4 for all our solution. So, that is another point to be noted. Otherwise, the numerical solution may face some error. We have to keep that in mind whenever we go for any numerical technique. So, the stability of the solution and the accuracy of the solution, they are both governed by the different parameters, the different way we actually solve the problem. So, in this case, theta is the parameter and that is why we call it Wilson theta and normally we set this theta equal to 1.4. Keep that in mind. So, uh, for all regular solutions, you keep theta equal to uh, 1.4 and with that, if you continue, you will get a stable solution. And uh, in the third lecture, when we will develop the MATLAB code, when we will compare again this result with other results and we will see uh, how trustworthy the solution is when we have uh, this theta is equal to 1.4. Now, this is all about Wilson theta. So, what it gives actually the clear idea of how we uh, derive the solution. Now, uh, in the third lecture actually I will give you the algorithms first for all these uh, numerical techniques and then one by one we will implement them in MATLAB and then compare the results. We will solve some problem and we will see how it works. Today, before we close, uh, I just want to discuss Numark beta, another numerical technique. So, what we have, the last one in this lecture series is Numark beta. Now, just like what you have seen, different uh, numerical techniques, they have different assumptions. So, in this case also, uh, there are uh, assumptions on accelerations. So, there are two different ways actually numeric proposed. So, one is called average acceleration method, another is again linear acceleration method. So, if I just draw and then I will explain. So, what we have here is uh, x double dot of t. So, here t i we have x i double dot and then we consider another time point say here. So, one time point at t i another is at t i plus 1 and these are the two time points and the difference between these two time point again is delta t. It can vary, but for the time being let us keep these as constant. Now, the first assumption is average acceleration. That means, in between two time points, if I draw the acceleration using a different color, so it has the average value. So, that is the average acceleration between that means, it remains constant. Now, if I consider a time point tau starting from T i, then x double dot of tau is what it is half 
x double dot at i plus 1 plus x double dot at i. This is the average value. Right. So, if I integrate this function, what I will get is the velocity and that is given by the velocity at time point i plus tau by 2 times x i plus 1 double dot plus x i double dot. So, if I continue integrating x of tau that is the displacement will be what? Displacement will be x i plus x i dot times tau plus then tau square by 4 x i plus 1 double dot plus x i double dot. Now, in this expression in place of tau, if we put delta t, what we will get? We will get basically x dot at i plus 1. So, what will be that? It will be x i dot plus delta t divided by 2, then x i plus 1 double dot plus x i double dot. Similarly, in this expression, if we put in place of tau delta t, so what we will get x i plus 1 is equal to x i plus x i dot times delta t plus delta t square divided by 4 times x i plus 1 double dot plus x i double dot. So, that is the average acceleration method. Now, if we consider linear acceleration method and then find out what should be these expressions, let us do in a minute. So, we have x double dot of t consider two time points at t i and then at t i plus 1 and in between them this time the, resp the acceleration varies linearly. So, we have x i double dot and then x i plus 1 double dot. Again the difference between the time is delta t which for the time being we consider constant and then uh, we consider a point tau. So, let us complete the exercise. So, what we have x double dot of tau will be what? We start from the initial point. So, x i double dot then plus what is the difference in acceleration? x i plus 1 double dot minus x i double dot divided by delta t times tau because we have a linear variation. Then again what we do? We integrate this function the moment we integrate the first term will be x i dot plus x i double dot times tau plus there will be tau square by 2 delta t times x i plus 1 double dot minus x i double dot. And then again if we repeat the same process integrate once more. So, what we will have x i plus x i dot times tau plus then we have uh, tau square by 2 
x i double dot plus then tau cube divided by 6 delta t times x i plus 1 minus x i sorry both of them will be double dot yeah. Now, you know what to do next in place of tau we will put delta t and the result what we will get is x i plus 1 dot is equal to x i dot plus x i double dot times delta t plus tau square by twice delta t within bracket x i plus 1 double dot minus x i double dot. Similarly, displacement at i plus 1 will be equal to x i plus x i dot times delta t plus tau square. So, this is delta t square divided by 2 x i double dot plus delta t cube divided by 6 times delta t. So, we can write delta t square within bracket x i plus 1 double dot minus x i double dot. So, up to this point it is fine you can easily sense what next we want to do we will satisfy the equilibrium equation at i plus 1th point and then we will put these expressions our job will be done. So, then we have to uh, see what are the unknowns, we will see that in a minute and then we will uh, find out the uh, response. Okay. So, what we do? We consider the equilibrium equation m x double dot at i plus 1 plus c x dot i plus 1 plus k x i plus 1 will be equal to f i plus 1 right. So, that is the expression we are going to satisfy you see we have derived the displacement velocity and also we have already expressed the acceleration. So, we can put those expression here and if you look at these expressions on the right hand side we can then express uh, the unknowns in terms of uh, uh, that k effective times the unknown will be x i plus 1 is equal to f effective. So, this is again the same format we will find out. We have to find out effective stiffness and then uh, effective force at i plus 1 from this equation. Of course, I mean uh, that will be a little complicated if you put all these expressions here. So, what uh, Newmark has proposed that x i plus 1 dot is equal to x i, this we have derived, but he actually combined uh, these two expressions in a simplified form. So, 1 minus gamma x i double dot plus uh, gamma times x i plus 1 double dot times delta t, there is a plus here. So, that is the expression for velocity and then acceleration is equal to x i plus x i dot delta t plus 0 0.5 minus beta times delta t square times x i double dot plus beta times delta t square times x i plus 1 double dot. It is actually the same expression what we have derived. Uh, he actually combined these two, one for average acceleration, another is for linear acceleration. using these two parameters. So, these are the same expression, but combined in a compact form. So, what we have here two parameters, one is beta, another is gamma, right. So, 
just by changing these parameters you can actually uh, get back the same uh, average acceleration or linear acceleration. And uh, the value of gamma typically gamma is equal to half and beta varies between one sixth to one fourth. Because of this beta parameter, this method is called uh, Newmark beta. So, if you again select these parameters, then again the solution will be numerically stable. And once you select these parameters, then again recall we have k effective times x i plus 1 is equal to f effective. So, what is the expression for k effective? If I just write it, so it is k plus gamma by delta t times beta times c plus 1 by beta times delta t square times m and then f effective is equal to f i plus 1 plus within bracket 1 by beta delta t square times m plus gamma by beta delta t times c then plus this times x i plus 1 by beta times delta t times m plus gamma by beta minus 1 times c multiplied by x i x i dot plus then 1 by twice beta minus 1 times m plus delta t gamma divided by twice beta minus 1 times c whole multiplied by x i double dot. Where from we get this expression again I repeat uh, if we use these uh, expressions and then put it in this equilibrium equation and then simplify then ultimately we will get this expressions. Uh, again what he has done he combined uh, both average and linear in this compact form using two parameters beta and gamma. We can uh, change this parameter and then we can get the average acceleration or linear acceleration. When we will write the code I will show you. But if you look at this expression when you evaluate say f effective on the right hand side you know all the quantities. We start our solution that means we know x i x i dot and using these two ins information if we satisfy the equilibrium equation we can get x i double dot. So, at the starting point we know all these quantities right. Then we can easily evaluate what is f effective. Similarly, if you look at the expression for k effective we know everything on the right hand side we know m c k the moment we start the iteration we actually set this beta and gamma parameter and we know delta t. So, we know everything on the right hand side. So, we can calculate what is k effective and f effective. Now, out of that one more important issue to be noted for every iteration k effective remains constant because on the right hand side we do not have any term that varies with time. So, once we select the parameter gamma and beta for the iteration we select the mass stiffness and damping. So, we can easily calculate k effective which will remain constant for the entire iteration procedure. The only thing is what we have to do we have to find out what is f effective and that varies as we change the iteration point. So, if we are at i and find out i plus 1. So, we know the forcing function at i plus 1. Then we also know x i x i dot we have to find out what is x i double dot. So, we know everything on the right hand side. So, we can find out what is x i plus 1 and that is equal to k effective inverse f 
effective. So, that is the solution. And once we do that, we actually can find out the displacement and velocity very easily from the expression that we have already derived. So, depending upon the type of assumptions we have, if you look at we have x i plus 1 dot and x i plus 1 that we can easily find out uh, using this uh, information. So, we have already find out displacement at i plus 1. So, for example, if you use linear acceleration method, so this equation will give us the unknown in this equation only unknown is x i plus 1 double dot. The moment we solve this equation, we can go to the previous equation. So, we can find out what is x i plus 1 dot. So, that is how the complete solution is made for this Neumark beta. So, that is how the algorithm works. Uh, as we progress in our next class, we will actually write down the code for all these uh, different techniques and uh, we will see how they perform as we keep on changing their parameters and we will compare with the known results that you have already derived using Duhamel integral. We will also some other problems, numerical problems on pen and paper and we will see how uh, these methods work. So, with that let us close here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.